Hi everyone, my name is Talia Alsberg. I'm a visual storyteller and tattoo artist currently in my very messy uh, Brooklyn studio. And today I'd love to discuss with you my growth process through my time in SVA. Let's get to it. Photography came to me um, through one of my mentors at my previous community college in Seattle. Um, his name is Chad White, and he taught me for the first time that photographs didn't necessarily need to only capture something that was existing, um, but rather you could create a moment that isn't real necessarily. Um, and so from very, very early on, I was super interested in bridging this gap between reality and non-reality and finding that really sweet spot in the middle where things look great, but they're not exactly there. The portfolio that I submitted for SVA um, was a mixture of photography work and illustration because I've always kind of been in the middle. When I was doing my portfolio, I I thought that it was important to sort of show a general language. I wasn't necessarily fully aware at the time that what I was doing was what it was, if that makes sense. Um, but it was sort of like putting things together that made sense color-wise, texture-wise, and story-wise. And so this was just a painting that I did God knows when, um, combined with two images from a photo series that I put together in my garage at the time. Yeah, so this photo was also the same kind of thing, two very separate images that don't necessarily have anything to do with one another. I didn't really know what I was doing, I didn't really have a clear direction direction, but I did know what I wanted things to look like. As you can see, very basic the milk bath vibes. Um, I was, you know, illustrating at the same time that I was photographing and I was looking for a way to show SVA, obviously, that those things can come together. I didn't know yet at the time how to do that, um, but we'll get there eventually. Yeah, and then just an illustration piece that I threw in there. I realized that I really wanted to show that even though I was going into the photo video department, um, I was intending to try different things and to bring in more stuff than just a general image. Um, this is one of the last projects I did before coming to SVA um, and before submitting the portfolio. Um, I took a bunch of my friends and of course I was very interested in the female image. Um, and so again, not really knowing what I'm doing, just playing around. Uh, so I actually came into SVA as a transfer student in my sophomore year. I didn't actually get to have a freshman uh, uh, blocks class here at SVA, um, but I did come with a little bit of like previous uh, stuff. So I did know a very small bit of Photoshop, not so much lighting, barely. Um, and this is sort of when the studio comes in. A wonderful professor, Elizabeth Bick, who I took uh, studio lighting with, um, and she taught me everything I know about lighting. But yeah, so this is sort of what my lighting exercises looked like. Now this is not necessarily uh, a phenomenal image, but this is where you see the beginning of what things look like right as you're starting out your journey here. This is another image from a class exercise that we did. I just thought I'd share it. We do work with models, it's really fun. And um, in this image, we started playing around with long exposure, um, which was super new for me. And I ended up obviously using it in my uh, future projects that we'll get to. Now, this image is the magic image because this is where self-portraiture started for me. Just playing around with bugs, again, doing a lot of compositing. Uh, you can see a couple mistakes uh, technically in the image. But, you know, it was sort of the beginning of something great. This image is called Moons from the same series I was working on at the time. Um, I started playing with more texture um, and then again went back to that wide lens. This lens is a 17 to 25. I love this lens. I recommend it for everyone if you want that distorted, like, kooky look. This is from the same project, playing with some bugs. I put it in my mouth. It was gross, uh, but very worth it for the picture. Uh, a lot of stuff you're seeing, of course, is composited. Um, but again, we're trying to make non-reality happen here, okay? Okay, so moving on to my junior year. This is when things start to get a little more interesting as I started realizing that I can go really deep with my work and that it doesn't necessarily have to mean anything, um, but there can be self-exploration through what you're creating. Just to show you, this is what a class exercise would look like. We shot this, I believe, in four by five. Um, I don't really 
photo shoot film anymore. But moving on to Many Ladies, which is the project I was doing in my junior year. Um, this is when I really started being interested in my roles as a woman. I started digging deeper into my work. I was alone in the studio. This sort of picture took me about six hours to make. Um, only one photo would come out of it, as you can see. Um, again, with that wide lens, it gives that super like uh, wide but close-up vibe so obviously I love that and I was trying to keep a color scheme with this project as well as I have in the past this photo as you can see is like the same fabric I'd go to the dollar store a lot and um, again get my hands on whatever sort of different textures and stuff I can uh, work with so obviously here you can really start to see in this red image um, the progression with my editing and uh, with the lighting, everything is starting to really look a little bit more crisp um, and together. Here is Crystal. Um, again, I cooked a lot of pasta in preparation for this image. This image with the fish um, was the first self-portrait I did on location. Um, I had a class where we got to go to a theme hotel in the city um, and I brought a fish with me. There's not really mountains in the back of this image, but everything else was actually in the photo. So very, very fun. This was amazing to do. So really from here on out, I started experimenting really um, specifically with woman roles and sort of what the roles of a woman were and how can I sort of break the patterns that have been happening ancestrally for women. I was also very interested in America because I am not American. Um, and so I was experimenting with Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders was one that I was super into, as you can see in this image. I did a series where I dressed up as child beauty pageant contestants, um, only one of them won, um, but that was a super fun exploration to do. And this is also the time when I started experimenting with video. So I was taking a uh, After Effects class at the time with Paul De Silva, who is amazing, very recommended. I finally found a way to make video work for me because until that time that I started doing the FX class, I didn't really feel connected to it. And then finally I was able to again create those worlds um, in reality, which was amazing. Okay, so moving on to my senior year, which just ended. Um, I didn't know what to do. Obviously, we were in a pandemic. Um, I didn't have the studio anymore that I've gotten so used to using. Um, barely even had a good camera on me because couldn't go to school. I wasn't even in New York at the time. I was interested in sort of creating an archive, this visual archive of my entire lifetime. And that was really where all of my senior year thesis started. And so I started collecting a lot of imagery from my childhood to see how I can combine all these things together and maybe make some sort of visual language. And this is when I found this gem of a picture from probably when I was 10 or 11, and this might be my very first self-portrait. I really started to look into what history means, and I very quickly realized that in order to create an archive of my own life, it would be important to create an archive of all life, of everything that has ever happened and ever will. So I had this huge roll of paper where I would just note down um, everything that was coming out of my brain. I got a lot into uh, quantum physics. I was researching occult. Um, I got more into Hinduism and Buddhism and absolutely everything that I could get my hands on that had anything to do with mysticism, spirituality, magic. And then eventually everything came together when I started sculpting. So I started creating uh, little creatures who eventually I realized were little spirit guides. And basically I created eight worlds um, where you can find your very own record keeper in reference to the Akashic Records. Um, and each one of them is supposed to have um, healing properties and within them uh, I've embedded, you know, this ancestral trauma healing that needs to happen for me, for my people, and obviously for the rest of the world because we all hold within us the DNA of our ancestors and everyone that came before us. So it was really important for me to dig deep and to find out how to get all of these things out and get them moving from the body. And finally, I found the way to combine all of the things that I love together. Um, this first image is me in the middle uh, with an owl head. This image is called the source. You can see that her little uh, fairy friends are helping her organize all of her mantras, all of her thoughts. I live by three basic mantras. 
Um, see all confrontation through the lens of compassion. Remember that your actions have an impact on all of humanity and release all self-limiting beliefs and doubts. And so those were the things that I was keeping with me um, while I was working on this project. I created the big helmet out of expanding foam that you can see right over there. And yeah, and the tunnel was just the inside of of it so again you can make anything out of anything it doesn't have to be the real thing to look like it's the real thing um yeah so Alina, the exit this is the the big protector of all knowledge as you can see by this point you can tell all of the technical things that i sort of collected over my time here coming together to create a super crisp image that looks really good and like comes together but still looks a little bit crazy which is all the things that i want to keep this image is called Blue Library. I just uh, brought our little robot friend here to show you kind of her scale and how big she is. Circumstances of COVID made it so that I would have to find a way to make these sculptures be visible over the internet. That now people can't necessarily hold this sculpture or you know talk to it as I originally wanted to, um, but now I'm able to create a full world um, for this being. The, the little caves or mountains on the sides are also all sculptures that I just photographed and stretched around and made it look like what it looks like right now. This is really um, a final ode to my love for illustration with this project, um, pretty much illustrating where the different worlds are for my beings, where are they located, and sort of the journey that you would take if you were to go through this story. I, of course, have a lot more work to share with you. You're more than welcome to check it out on my website. It's taliaalsberg.com um, or for tattoo work on Talia Allsberg Art on Instagram. The experience that you will have at SVA is really all about you. Be unapologetic with your work. Do whatever you want. Um, make it really work for you. Remember to not take yourself too seriously. Art is supposed to be healing and art is supposed to be fun. Also remember that it's not really necessary for you to be perfect or know exactly how to do what you're doing. Don't fall into the pressure of doing what everybody around you is doing because let, let those people do that. You need to be focusing on what makes you happy, what comes from your heart and what makes you feel good. Very nice to meet you all. Um, I will be here. So uh, see you later, bye.